know we're doing and I know we're saying and we're looking at all this and it just became became so heavy in the atmosphere in, in that living room it just became like almost you know the Bible talks about um, heaviness and it was just talking what we saw and it was some true things in the natural that we saw that were very frustrating and so this just began to get on me, and I can just feel that. I mean, it just feels like someone put this big weighted blanket. I hate weighted blankets, I'll tell you right now. My family loves them. We all got them for Christmas, and you try to get them off the couch, and it feels like you're moving a body. I'm like, ugh. And I'm like, I think I pulled my shoulder out. I'm like trying to move this weighted blanket. I cannot stand, like, I feel like almost, you know, like I'm trapped if I put a weighted blanket under me. So <laughs> that's what it felt like. A weighted blanket has been just thrown on me. And I got in the car to go to my appointment, and, man, I just, I reached for something because I know better. I've been trained better. You don't just come up under this and what those thoughts and even the things in the natural is not what it, it, it was really like. In the natural, it looks like that, circumstances. But I don't go by the seen. I go by the unseen. I live by faith, and I don't doubt. And so I'm trying to stir myself up in the Lord, but I'm still feeling this blanket on me. You know, the Bible says... Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And, and that sounds like a great scripture, but if you watch, if you start talking and looking at things that don't that look contrary to what you're believing in the word and what you're standing on, you'll feel it. It feels heavy. It feels yucky. And so you have to get yourself out of there. You have to, like David would say, I stirred myself up in the Lord. And he would tell his soul, you, you're going to bless the Lord right now. Soul, bless the Lord. You got to tell your body what to do. You got to tell your soul what to do. So I got in the car, and I mean, I grabbed graves to gardens. I mean, that's a boom, 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 boom. So I had the windows down. It was cool, and I'm just cranking it. My neighborhood's probably like going, what is she doing, you know? <laughs> I didn't care. So I am just praising God, and I'm yelling and, and, and screaming, not at God, but praising God. And I am making myself get into a different place. I am deciding to get out of that atmosphere that was created by talking what it, what it looked like. And I decided I'm changing this atmosphere in the car and around me. And so I start praising God, and I start. And, and the thing is, it was so cool. Because I was following God here. I'm just doing what he, what he has taught me to do. And he's just so good to meet you there. And what kept, I, I took the first step and then he led me into more. So I started being very specific. You know, it's easy to go, I praise you, God. I love you, God. I praise you, God. You're good, God. You're good, God. You're good. And you're still thinking about the problem. <laughs> you're still, how are we going to get out of this? I've been believing. Why isn't it working? You know, and I started saying very specific things. God, I remember when you did this. I remember when it didn't look like it was working. I remember when it looked like all hell was breaking loose in my life. I, look, I remember when we were about to lose our house the next day, and I believed you, and you were faithful, and I danced in my kitchen, and I said, I'm not looking at what it looks like. My God is greater. My God is bigger. My God is mighty for me. I don't care what I see. And even if I am out of my house, I'll go out in the street and praise you all the more. I mean, I was just in a place that he got me to because I had to decide. It's like a place, guys. It's like if this was a room over here by the drums and I just decide, am I going to stay out here in unbelief or am I going to step on into faith right here and believe God? Because faith is what pleases him and faith is the connector. It's the pipeline to get you the things you need for your life. And so I began to praise, and I got very specific. I remember that night. I remember when you came through. I remember your goodness, and you did that too. And I mean, by the time I met the chiropractor, I go, I don't think I can go in. I might be a few minutes late because I'm like crying joy. There's so much faith in me. I actually felt like I put my hand in a, in a socket, <laughs> in a light socket. I felt almost electrified. I'm not going by feelings, but that's what God and the faith of God will do to you when you decide to change your atmosphere. So, um, man, and I'm believing. It wasn't like, oh, well, it happened that day, everything I was believing for. I'm in a place. It's happening. It's happening. It's working. He'll do it again. So I want you to remember that. He'll do it again. 
So I, we've been in prayer many times. I'll pray out. We'll be praying out testimony. We prayed it this morning. Testimony, testimony. So much where I'm like, God, are you trying to tell me something? Do we have a testimony service or something like that? Like we need to give testimonies or I'm testifying of you. I mean, I say, talk about your goodness. I, I didn't know what it meant. And sometimes God will keep bringing that to you and get you to dig a little deeper. And so I've just, God, I, I believe you to show me about this testimony thing. There's, I, I feel like there's more to it than we overcome by the blood of lamb, word of our testimony. That's true. It's powerful. Yes. But it just seems like there's always something more there. I don't know. So I heard this message. I'm going to share what I got from it that just totally rocked my world. Jessica said I got my fire shirt on, and I said, well, this message is fire. And it's not because it's from me. It's from him. <laughs> <laughs> Your shirt looks like fire. I'm like, yes, I'm full of fire of God. Wasn't that uh, Whitfield that said, you know, God set me on fire and people come watch me burn. I love that. I'm like, that's the, that you've become transformed. People will see it and they'll want to be transformed. Amen. So testimony. Remember, firmament, firmaments, atmospheres, testimony. So in Hebrew, testimony doesn't just mean testify, share, tell. That's a part of it. I might need a drink before I get into all this. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Y'all are going to shout because God's given us good stuff today. Amen. So testimony. It actually means a Jewish rabbi came up to this minister and said after a service and he said you know what testimony actually means he was a messianic rabbi anyway um he said in jewish in hebrew it means do again and he goes you know why we have the feast and they come around we don't think linear we think circular in god and actually god does this to take us from glory to glory faith to faith new dimensions higher different places in different realms, higher, higher, um, dimensionally, actually, but we won't get into all that. Um, he means do it means do it again. So when those feasts come around, that's why God says, and you've hear, heard me teach it. It so came alive to me. God says, "Remember, do this, act it out. You need to do this." The Jews right now they're acting out something. We're in the middle of a feast. We're coming in. Today's the last day of the ten days of awe, and it's a time of repentance. And it's that ten days where they have to. Uh, repent of their sins to see if they're going to live through the next year. Pretty serious time. <laughs> and so that's what they're doing right now. Today's the last day. And then we go into Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement. And that's when the, the sins will be. The priest would go in and atone for the sins with the sacrifice and the blood. Pretty powerful time. And um, God says to remember these and remember so he can do it again. Because even, I saw this even different with communion. I'll never see it the same. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Do it so I can do this again. So when we testify of what he's done, I was in that car testifying of those very detailed things God brought me through. Faith began to rise up. And I, I mean, I could feel the power of God on me, in me. And what that does, I began to see it. I'm like, I just did that, God. You're so awesome. I didn't even know what I was doing. I'm just trying to get myself out of a place. <laughs> but that testifying will bring that power that was there and was available at the time you tapped into it long ago, and it'll bring it there for right then. He says, I want to do it again. That's why you have a communion. Remember the power of the blood, the Passover, everything. Remember what I did so he, I can do it again. And it's not like in the Bible you would hear so many times, God, remember your covenant with you. Remember this. Remember that. It wasn't that God forgot. He needed you to remember. So that's a connector. And then it just causes him to think about what he did. And there's enough power in God where he can just think about it. And you're connecting with what he did. And you're remembering that that power meets. And you have your supply for what you need. You have the power there. It's amazing. I'm like, testimony, God. You've been giving us clues and prayer. Testimony, testimony, testimony. I'll do it again. I mean, that song now, now I see it totally different. Do it again. 
I'll do it again. I mean, he is longing to do it again. And faith is the connector. We got to remember. I mean, he's been talking to me for over a year. Write down things. Get up in the morning. Write down things you're thankful, things he's done for your life. That's because you remember. And, and your faith rises up. And then he can do it again. He wants to do it again for you. We don't live on those paths, things like, oh, wasn't that great when you did it then? Well, I was in a different place then. And, oh, I just wish God would move like that right now in this situation. That's not how it is. You remember. You say it back to him. You thank God for it. And then he comes and says, I want to do it again. I want to do it again. It's powerful. So he wants to do it time and time again. That's why he told, it, you know, I love children and taught school, children's ministry. Love it. Love kids. Have my own. But he's so many times, tell this to your children. Tell this to your children. Now you have to tell this to, tell what I've done. Tell what I've done to your children. Tell about the covenant. Tell about the covenant. And I'm like, because he wants to do it again in them. He wants to do it again in your life and in their life. And then they begin to tell it to their kids, and then he can do it again. He can come around and do it again every time for you. Amen? So like when Passover, you know, nobody, everybody should get healed at Passover. Because <laughs> you remember that blood that was for your healing and what God did. And you just said, take your healing. I mean, you remember what that blood was for. All of it. Amen? So, the, word, the, the year of the decade of the mouth, trying to cover the mouth. The enemy's no dummy. He has strategic things he tries to do. But when we get, when God shows us stuff, we got to rise up and go, okay, we're, we're not going to shut our mouths. We're going to speak the word. We're going to talk like God. And we're going to remember these things. He, we're going to testify of his goodness in our lives so he can do it again for me. And do it again for others. You know, this rabbi that this uh, minister was talking to said, you know, this is so powerful. Because he has such a re revelation of that. With the Hebrew revelation brought into the new covenant revelation. He said, we, this is working in our, in our church. We do this. We take people that have been healed of terminal diseases, cancer. And we take them, uh, we take these people them to the people that are dealing with these these issues cancer different illnesses and, and they spend a lot of time with them sometimes daily and they just talk about how God healed them they talk about what God did I mean look at one of my fathers in the faith Kenneth E. Hagan he just talked about sometimes you he's telling the story again and then what was it what street on on whatever in Kenny Texas and he tells the whole thing again because he's trying to testify and do the testimony so people will get it and that faith that same faith that was there that brought him out of the sick bed will come into that place be sprinkled in that firmament that atmosphere and those people will grab hold with their faith and they'll be healed and this rabbi said these people are getting healed of cancer listening to these people tell about their testimony because God wanted to do it again. He said, I'll do it again. Talk about me. Talk about what I did because I'll do it again. Amen? So powerful. So we know that our confession is important. Life and death, power of the tongue. It's very important. I know for my own life, maybe I'm the one that I'm still working on getting those words out there. I maybe will like, oh, we can't say that. Oh, I can be the word police. Pastor Paul said I can be the word police at my house with my teenagers. Don't say that, don't say that. But I am working on and getting better at getting my words out there. So testimony of all that God did so he can come and do things again in my life. I'm working on that. We all got to work on it together because, you know, that word, one of the, the Greek word for, for a word of God is legos, and it's like building blocks, like legos. That's the root word, logos, legos is the root word, and that's where we get the word for legos, and it's building upon building. But, you know, that can work in the negative way too because the enemy can come, circumstances get you to say things Maybe your parents said, or maybe your coworkers at work, or your spouse or friends say. So you just say it because you want to be cool, and you say that, and 
Maybe the enemy gives you some things that you believe in your thoughts, and so you begin to say it, and it starts building something in your life that should have never been there, that God didn't want to build for you. Because remember, a few weeks ago, when I did minister, God was showing us how he's building you for what he's already built for you. So part of that, he wants you to talk like him and activate your testimony so that power is available for you. And so we keep building. You come to church, you keep building. You came today, you're adding some more blocks today. I believe you are. You're adding some more building blocks, good ones, the God ones. So you, you're being built for what he's built you for. Because this is the kind of stuff that will help you uh, follow your destiny and get in your destiny. Because God has a destiny for you. Say that with me. Say, God has a destiny for me. And it's true. I don't care what the enemy said. I don't care what somebody said to you. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what it looks like. God has a very precise and specific destiny for you. And, and something for you to do. And by talking like him, knowing what he says about you, about your life, it gets you into that path, that destiny. Faith-filled words, guys. Because that day when I was dealing with that, I could have been like, bless you, Lord. Yeah, graze in the garden. <laughs> I've been there before. I just went, yeah, I'll listen to a praise song, but it's still really lousy. Because I didn't decide. I didn't just, you know, really dig in there with believing. I just kind of went through the motions. We can do that. I've done it. You go through the motions, you're not changed. I mean, anybody can come in here every week and not be changed. You're like, what? But we create atmosphere. We pray, you know. Yeah, and I'm believing that atmosphere is created will pull people, even if they're not in faith, to get in faith. It'll rub off on them, and they'll get something. But you could just come in and go through motions and not receive those building blocks, receive that change that God is offering you and providing for you. Amen? Nobody here, though. Nobody here, right? You guys are engaged. You're, you're pulling. So words are what? I created a new uh, life for you. It took hearing a message, hearing a word, and deciding, I need Jesus. And you ask him with words to be your Lord and Savior, to come into your heart, to live in you, to change you. You were born again. Such a big transformation. A miracle happened when you used those words to invite God to invade your life. Amen? Isn't that good? Words. So the same words that you testify, you use as your testimony, you, you can activate things, the power of God in your life, just like that was. That did it for you. It can still continue to do things for you as you speak what God says. Very important. So um, another word. I'm going to give you a lot of Greek and Hebrew today. So um, This word, debar. It means word of the Lord. It means actually means to um, change, rearrange thoughts so that you will speak what God, to line up with God, so you'll speak what God speaks, to change, rearrange. And so this story that I heard that is just, it's amazing. Um, totally saw this different. Of David and Goliath. So I'm checking my time. I don't want to go way over. <laughs> David and Goliath. So David, we know the story of David and Goliath. Big story. Kids love this story. David and Goliath. And um, so David's a shepherd boy. We know that he what he was anointed king. He didn't look like the one they wanted to choose. They thought the big strapping, you know, young brothers that were the warriors were going to be the king. But God said, I don't look on the outward. I look on the heart. And that's the one. That little shepherd boy, little teenager out in the field is the one. Now, you know God did a miracle if he's going to choose a teenager. <laughs> I have teenagers. I love my te My teenagers are awesome. Other teenagers I've heard about, you know. I mean, I can just see that play out. Like, if it's the typical 2020 teenager, like, I got to do what? I got to take my brother's food? That's way over there. Why can't you get some? Don't we have servants that do that? I mean, can you just see the typical... You know, but they would win that way, thank God. And uh, 
<laughs> and he even gets there, you know, his dad says, okay, you're, he's out with, with God and, and, and watching the sheep and, and the brothers are, have the glamorous job. They're out, you know, at, at war and with the armies or whatever and, and it, the armies of Israel. And so he, he's got to go do the little, the running job, the gopher jobs, you know, the gopher, just go for it, you know. So he goes and has to take them food. And they're just so being big brothers. Like, what are you doing here? Go back. You just came to God. You just came to look. I mean, you can just hear it. These big brothers being bullies. And he's like, what? And, and he's like, who's this guy? This is what I'm giving you my version. Like, who's this dude? Goliath would come out for 40 days. He had came out every day and just bad-mouthed God, bad-mouthed the people of God, the, the armies of Israel, just trashing them. And he's a huge dude, like 11 feet tall or more or something. He's huge. So very intimidating. But his mouth, I think, was what was the most intimidating, those words. Those words were creating an atmosphere out there to the children of Israel, the armies of Israel. These are armies surrounding guys. This is just not just the brothers were hanging out there and, and he came out and it scared him. These are the armies. King Saul is out there. And this Goliath would come out and just spew this doubt, unbelief. You're nothing. And every day until it says they were terrified. Armies, trained armies. And so here comes the teenager with the food, with the snacks. He went to Chick-fil-A and got the, you know, the big pack, <laughs> nugget pack. Got to have the Chick-fil-A sauce. So he got it, came up there, and he's, who is this guy? And they're like, go back home. You just came to look, and what are you doing here anyway? He goes, what? He goes, don't we, isn't there a cause? And what that word actually means is, is there a testimony is there a history? Is there a promise that we have? Isn't there a promise we have against this dude? And I see it like this. I really do see it like this. He's out there spending time with God, and God's shown himself faithful and strong on his behalf. And, and he hasn't heard this guy, but he has spent time in this hidden away place, in this separated place, so to speak, with his father learning who he is. He was a worshiper. God said, you're a man after my heart. He spent that intimate time with God. And his atmosphere around him was always faith and believing. And God had came through from him. He'd seen it. He had testimonies. So I see it like this. He came in and goes, who does this guy think he is? Y'all, we got some history here. We have a testimony. We have a right to get him out of here. What are you all doing? And they even like, go on, get out of here. They didn't want to hear that. Because, you know, some people down in the, in the mully grubs and their doubt and unbelief, they just want to stay down there. They want you to feel sorry for them. They want, to get in, they want you to get in there with them. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, I know it does look bad. Oh, I know. I just oh, look how big. And we're here. And look what he says. And he's huge. And they, it, people that are in that funk, kind of, they want you to get in there with them. I don't know if you, have you ever met anybody. It gets on my main last nerve. It does. I'll just tell you right now. I just like, ugh, ugh. And someone the other day, the devil did this, and the devil, and the devil, and the devil, and this, and the devil. I felt that there were testimony of the devil. Bless his holy name. I'm like, no, he's not. He's terrible. Quit talking about the devil. I just had to go, whoa, 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 wait. Stop saying devil. Stop talking about what he's doing. And this is before I got this whole download, guys. So God's been really showing me stuff. I mean, it's been awesome. Like, wait a minute. We're, we're not going to talk about all he's doing because you're really making that huge like they did Goliath that day. He's huge. He comes out every day. He, he's terrifying. We're terrified. And so he's just like, we have a promise. Y'all, we have a promise. And so he didn't, he didn't even bat an eye. In fact, he was just thinking about the prize. He jumped all the way to what's the prize? What do I get? Because he had already defeated him in his mind. He's like, I got this. I got this. And so, like, you get to marry a daughter, and you have to pay taxes. I don't have to pay taxes. Man, that'd be nice not to have to pay taxes. Wouldn't it? Like, yes, sign me up. So, as, so David goes out there, and this is so good. So remember Debar, word of the Lord. Rearranges, it changes things. So how when David came up and saw that, it totally was changed. The thoughts were changed the right way. 
and he saw it the right way where they didn't see it. And so he began to speak to that giant, and he said what he was going to do, and he didn't even call him Goliath. He didn't call him a giant or his name Goliath. He just called him uncircumcised Philistine. That meant man with no covenant. Now, this is so cool, guys. This is so cool. I didn't get this all. I got it from, from a, a message, but I'm going to share it because it's so awesome. So, ended up, the land that he's on is their land. Now, my husband's probably like, yeah, I remember, and he can say the whole Jewish name, the Valley of the Blood, and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't connect it here, guys. I didn't connect it here. You might have. They're on the land that David's great, 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 great grandfather, Abraham. God promised Abraham. This is their covenant land. He's standing on his covenant land. And he's like, hey, you with no covenant, you don't even stand a chance. So he has a staff. Now, this is the cool part, too. Their staffs, you've probably heard this, and I have too, but I, I see it different even now. The staff had markings and things written on the staff, on his shepherd staff. And what was written, they wrote their testimonies on it. I'm going to come out here so I can see you. <laughs> they wrote what God had done. He had wrote what God, his history with God, all that God had did. So when he looked at it, I can just see that all coming together like, God, you're going to do this again. You deliver me from, he even said it. He started speaking his testimony. You delivered me from the lion. God delivered me from the bear. My God is mighty and he's going to cut, I'm going to cut you. He's going to deliver me from you and I'm going to cut your head off. I'm going to shut that mouth. We need to shut the enemy's mouth. I don't care if you got your mask on in Costco. Go, bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is faithful. He's working in me. I tell you what, I got a testimony. <laughs> and you get out of the parking lot, you can say it louder. He's not going to shut us up. So David said he'll do it again. This is who my God is. I have a covenant. So, he reaches down, if you remember the story, into the brook. Well, the Hebrew word for brook was inheritance. Because it was like the things that flow into you and then you disperse out, you get an inheritance, it's all this. But the, the word meant for brook was inheritance. That land was his inheritance that God had made a covenant with Abraham, his forefather, and that was his. He saw it. He knew it. God showed him this. So he reached down in the brook, his inheritance, pulled out those five stones. Remember what five is, everybody. I think you all know. Five is, anybody know? Grace. He pulled out some grace from his inheritance and his covenant, and then he threw that. I don't care if you threw it behind him. It was going to land. It was going to land on him. It wasn't all his amazing skill and so everything. He drew up out of that testimony of God will do it again. He did it before. He, I have a covenant with my God. I am even standing on my covenant land, my covenant promise. And I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to kill this guy. And I'm going to cut his head off. Because he had a covenant with God. He had a promise. He had a testimony. He had some history with God. This is our history. That's our history. We can go, David, da da God, David. We have been, if you're not Jewish, you by blood, you've been engrafted in when you accepted Jesus. You're in the family. You're adopted in, but you're engrafted, the Bible says. That's part of your covenant. I'm like, God, that's why you've had me for the longest time I've been on the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And, and I feel like I tell this whole same story at church, and they're like, why well, should go back to that story every time? At least I changed it a little bit with David and Goliath today. I'm sure you guys are alive. But he's had me on that story of coming out of Egypt, getting that bondage off, and coming into that, that trial time, that testing, that wilderness, that rehabilitation, so he could bring you into the promise. He's, been had, us, he's had us on that, and now it came to more light to me, and it showed me that's a testimony. That's history. 
My history, your history. Even says in the New Testament, you need to look at this story. And he says it again. Pay attention to this story. This is for your admonition, for your, for your reproof, for your example. This is what not to do, guys. He says it several times. And if God's telling you in the new, you can't even use that. Nobody can use that excuse. That's Old Covenant. That's Old Testament. I don't want to look at that. I want to look at a new story. Well, God's telling you in the new, go back to the old. Because it's a testimony. If God will do it for them, he'll do it for you. You know, you're sitting here because of history with God. He did it for you. He'll do it again. You're breathing. Hey, COVID-19 didn't take us all out, guys. Like everybody thought, we are all going to just drop like the black plague, dropping like flies. I'm like, no, <laughs> we're alive and well. Amen? We survived another year. God's brought us through. I believe God to show you things that you haven't seen that he did. I believe right now he's connecting some dots for you because this is what happened to me when I heard this. That God, my testimony, I'm telling what you did for me. Even the little things, it's bringing that power back and it's just like that, those words that I am creating in that atmosphere are like sprinkling that power of God back into my situation so you can do it again. He wants to do things big for you again. And so many people, and I've done it too, lived on that path. I remember when you did that. That was really great. I wish I could be in that place, like I said before. You can be. You just have to decide. You have to start testifying testimony. Say, God, you'll do it again. You're doing it for me. You're doing big things for me. You're doing big things for our nation. Don't talk what it looks like in our nation. Don't talk that way. You have a promise. He said, we humble ourselves and pray. Turn from our wicked ways. He'll come and heal our land. He said to pray for leaders and authority that you may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. There's two for you right there. There's a promise to stand on. There's a testimony. There's God, you'll do it again. You did it before. You'll do it again. And we have something so strong in our nation where God has done it before. There's many times our nation looked like... At the Revolutionary War, it looked like there's no way. Guys, come on. A British army and a bunch of farmers and pastors out there with guns? Come on. You don't think that was God? I mean, you would just be dumb if you looked at that whole story and went, God was no part of that? Yeah, he was a big part of it. He did it again. You know, uh, George Washington, when he got up and he was so first president inaugurated or whatever and got him sworn on the Bible and kissed the Bible and he got up and he began to declare and make covenant with God in the first speech that he made after he was inaugurated or put in as our president I mean I just looked at that and God I'm standing on that that's the first leader our first king our first president I'm standing on that I have a co we have a covenant you'll do it again God you'll do it again He'll do it again. He wants to do it again for you in your life. You're the one that gives him the access. You're the one who creates the atmosphere for God to move. I mean, listen to some old stories. This minister I was talking to, Regina, you'll like this. <laughs> Regina's got a lot of good songs that she knows. I have to try to remember all the old good songs that they're oldie goody ones, but full of faith and power. And God was showing this minister, you need to get out those old songs. Songs about the blood of Jesus. Song of, songs about how big and mighty he is and how he'll do it again. How faithful he is. Get those old songs. Because when those songs were written, that person had this download from heaven, had this testimony of what God had done in their life, and they testified, and they were saying, God did it. He'll do it again for you, so I'm going to make this song. So you can sing it, and he'll do it for you. So you get these songs. They come out of a place. They came out of a place in God that was full of faith, and it was his power working in their lives. And you go back to some of these things, not only in your own life, but things like this. God's done in our nation. God's done in people. God's done miracles. And then it begins to manifest for you because there's power. Those words connect you to his power. It's not we're waiting on God. 
And I know you might go, yeah, I know, I know. But you know, sometimes in the back of my mind, I kind of sometimes think I am. Like, God, you know you're coming through. God, when are you? He's probably like, when are you going to do? Get with the program here. I mean, I got a Bible full of stories for you. Look at David. I mean, hello? We just did what David did, right? Write down, get your little notebook, get your iPad, get your phone, write down, oh, God, you did this. And then if something comes up and someone's like, oh, you got a bill, or oh, this, you got a bad report of the doctor. Just, hold on, hold on just a second, let me pull up my phone. Oh, yeah, God did this, so God did this. And that. Well, he, God did this and this and this, so, so he's, he's going to cure, I mean, he's going to heal me of this, and I don't have to deal with this, or he's going he's gonna to provide, provide for this bill because it's no big deal for God because I have a history with God. He'll do it again. And it's not just saying it just like, okay, it's a formula, I'm going to do that. you got to really get it in you. you got to really believe it. Just like we sang, I believe you, God. I believe you. David didn't look at his inabilities. Teenager? Even Saul said, here's my armor. And Saul was way bigger. The armor was so heavy. And, you know, he said, I can't wear this. I have no history with this. I have, I have no story with this. I have no testimony with your armor. But I have a testimony with these stones and with my God. And he didn't need all that. You need what God's given you. You take what God's given you and let those words and that faith rise up and activate in your life. If this is a decade of the mouth, guys, we need to be speaking like we've never been speaking before. And all your words need to line up with God's. And watch it happen for you. He's not God. He's waiting on you. He is waiting on me and you. Remember, what pleases him is faith. And it's not something like, well, God, just, I need to have faith or I'm not pleasing to God. It, 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 it's like this. This is, I believe, the heart of God on this. I want you to have faith because that's the way I work and that's the way I can get it to you. And he's pleased when he can bless his kids. I'm so pleased when I can bless my kids. When something I do, I cook something. Like, Mom, this is so good. Oh, you did it just perfect. I wanted this. I was in the mood for this. It's so good. I like to cook, so it really blesses me if I can cook. And one of my love languages, I guess, is cookie. So I can cook, and then they really like it. And oh, it just pleases me that I did something to bless them. And, and God's even more than, than I am, than we are. He wants to bless us. He wants to meet our needs. He's already provided for all of it. We just have to get in that place Create that atmosphere with our testimony and say, God, you'll do it again for me. I believe you. I believe you. So I'm going to challenge you this year. We went into a new year in God's calendar, but still the decade of the mouth. And I got a whole thing about the next year, but I will not give that to you today. We would be here for three more hours. So I know you want to go eat lunch, but <laughs> I'm going I'm to stop right here. But I have stuff about the very not just the decade, but the, the number we went into on God's calendar, and it's really good. It's just revelation. God's just dig, and I'll give you the treasures. Seek, and you'll find. That's what I'm, I'm finding that out, guys, more and more. You know, I knew that, but the more I just, you know, the, des the testimony connected with this, and now he's connecting all these dots for me, and I just believe he's doing that, like I said, for you all today. He's connecting those things in your life, and then it's going to take you into a place where you fulfill your destiny for your life and it's going to help other people too amen so father i thank you for today i thank you for your word that is true i thank you for the light you've given all of us and i thank you that that light changes your light it changes it rearranges our thinking that god because we're in this time of repentance it means Repentance means to go another way. Think different. Think the right way. Think your way. So we line up with you, God. We decide. We're thinking like you. We're speaking like you. We'll not say how it looks, how it's not working, how it feels. But we'll speak faith. We'll speak our testimony. God did this for me. God, you'll do it again. Do it again on our lives, God. We believe you too. And we thank you, Lord. 
if anybody's here and they they don't know Jesus or they've been far away from Jesus and they want him they want to get in his perfect plan they want him to come into their life make him brand new we're just going to pray this prayer together today so repeat after me father I thank you for Jesus I believe he's your son you sent to die for me take away all my sins and make me brand new Jesus take my life be my Lord be my Savior and in my life do what you want have your way in me in Jesus name amen amen well thank you all I hope you got all that you came for and more but keep working with it write it down that's what God's been telling me write these things down and it makes sense to me now those are all things of God has done and God has shown me when you write it down you can go back and honor God with what he's given you and let it continue to work and connect with other things to to maneuver you into a place that he's already made ready for you. I believe that for this year. This new year in God's new year we came in. It's a brand new year, guys. Thank God, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Been a tough year, but you know what? It it, 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 it it was a narrow place, but we're coming out into a broad place. Amen? But this is how you do it. Faith in your speaking, in your testimony. Amen? Amen.